guys, welcome to what we call early Christian Ireland. And I'm sure you've all heard of St. Patrick. Surely you have, we sell them all over the world. <laughs> well, St. Patrick came here in the year 432. And of course, back then he was just known as Patrick. Uh, and he came to convert the Irish to Christianity. And he's kind of, he's taken credit for it. He probably wasn't the only person involved, um, but he obviously had a good PR team because he's got all the credit. And from the fifth century on, um, Ireland has become a Christian country. We get the advent of monasteries. So our monastery here is based a little bit later on in history, so about 300 years after St. Patrick, maybe seventh or eighth century. Uh, but they're, they follow pretty much fairly similar guidelines, the monasteries. They usually have two kind of distinct areas. We have a higher ground or a holy ground, where only the monks would be permitted, and that's then our chapel. We have an outside altar called the layout. Uh, we have our sundial up here as well, which tells the monks when it's time to pray. So the abbot, the head monk, would ring a bell eight times a day, and the monks would come to pray. They were hardcore. Uh, back then. Today, Christian monks only pray seven times a day. A little bit, <laughs> got a little bit soft on us. Uh, but down here is the other area, the secular area. We'd all be permitted down here. The, the buildings down here are just as important, uh, especially this one here. This one is known as the scriptorium. It's a little bit like the schoolhouse. This is where the monks would have been writing their books and their manuscripts. Um, so there's lots of famous books that come out of Irish monasteries. We've got the Duro, the Annals of Ulster, the Annals of Four Masters. Uh, most famous one, or most well known, be the Book of Kells, which you can visit up in Trinity College, certainly worth a visit. But they're all wrote in a, a scriptorium, like this one. This next building is the abbot's cell. So the abbot I already mentioned, he's the head monk. He got his own place. Um, however, he may well have shared it with his wife and children, because back then the abbot was still permitted to marry. Uh, all of the other monks, they live in, communally in this building here. We call it the refectory. So when they're not working the fields or maybe tending the herb gardens or the beehives, uh, they're living, sleeping all together, eating in there. I mentioned up above, we talked about a stone beehive hut, a beehive cell. Uh, so it doesn't belong in this particular monastery. It's there as an illustration. They are found down in the Dingle Peninsula fa uh, famously, and of course on Skellig Michael, uh, which is a fantastic visit if you ever got the chance to UNESCO World Heritage Site. What's intriguing about them again is engineering. There's no uh, cement or mortar used in the building of a beehive cell. They use a technique called corbelling. So as they rise the stones up, they move them in ever so uh, slightly each time, and at the top is the capsule opening that locks them into place. I mean, like they're almost freestanding. Um, now, you'd love to give credit to the monks for inventing this in the seventh century. It's not the case. Corbelling is used on Newgrange. The roof in Newgrange, as you've seen in the video, is a corbel roof, and that's 5,000 years old. That's so so, yeah, so it shows these people are ingenious right throughout. Uh, they're very, very clever people. The last thing I want to tell you about is our high cross, or sometimes you'll hear people refer to them as a Celtic cross, uh, but they are a teaching aid. They're used by the monks to teach the Irish about the Bible and Bible stories. So all of these pictures or illustrations, they all represent different stories from the Bible. Uh, I'll give you the easiest. That's the three wise men. That's as far as my knowledge goes when it comes to the Bible. This one I'm told is Daniel in the lion's den. Uh, I was way off, it has nothing to do with gummy bears. <laughs> Uh, and you'll see the crucifixion story on the back of the high cross as well. One last point to make. This is brightly coloured. Today when you drive the, around and you see um, high cross in the environment today, they're all just stone and grey. They were all once brightly illustrated. That's just weathering over years now has taken the colour out of them. But it was always, but this one is a, um, a replica of one found at Castle Dermot, which is not a million miles from here, it's in um, Clare, I think. A week over, it's up the east coast a little bit. Is there any questions there? Do you want to take a look around a couple of the buildings? We'll move on when you're all ready. 